Hello, everyone. Long time no see. Thank you for coming back and joining me again for um, our happy little sewing hour. This week we're getting together in the evening. Sometimes we might get together during the daytime. Uh, and today is Monday, March 21st, 2022. And I am Angela with Happy Little Stitch Shop. And we are here to either make chicken salad if you're working on that, if you're working on another chicken block, or just to hang out and sew together. So that's kind of the idea is just to get some sewing time in together and keep making progress on all of those projects we have going on. So hello, hello. Thank you for joining me. I am Angela. Good to see you guys again. Hello, Sandra. She says, good evening, Angela and everyone. Great to see everyone for a second time today. Love you all. Hugs to you too, my friend. Patty, hello. Had to miss live earlier today. Very tense at work, so wasn't able to join in. So glad I'm able to be here now. Sorry about tense at work. Happy you are able to be here now. Kick back and relax and welcome some happiness into your life. Hello, Ruth P. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Susan. Hello, Marsha. Hello, Nancy. Oh, so I got this online. Remember I said today, oh my gosh, I have that. Somebody mentioned this and I said, I have it. And I meant to put it online in time for the, the floss tube today. And I forgot about it. So Lori Holt's new stitch card set, stitch card set L, which is adorable, has been released. I got it right away. And it is in the shop at happylistitchshop.com. So stitch card set L is in the shop. Ready to ship. Let's see. Hello, Audrey. So glad you are here. So since the last time I saw you, I had nothing prepared for tonight. And now I've got all my, my pieces ready to go. And some of them, my mother-in-law popped in um, to say hello. And <clears throat> so I was turning some pieces while I was sitting here chatting with her. So I did get a couple pieces turned, but I have more to turn here. And my goal if all goes well, not to finish it during this hour, but my goal, if all goes well, is to try to finish Edna tonight. And here she is for our inspiration. She is so cute. Oh my gosh, she's so darling. Somebody said today that Edna is their favorite so far. Hello, Deanna. Hello, Brandy. Brandy, I cannot believe that you <laughs> have the same... Um yarn bowl as Huckleberry and I. Does anybody else have that cute little bowl? And, or is anybody else going to get it? Because it's so darn cute. We talked about it today on Floss Tube. And um, it's very, very cute. It turns out Huckleberry has the same one as me. And then I just read that Brandy has the same one as Huckleberry and I. So that's really funny. Good evening, Gaylene. Hello, Carrie. That new stitch card is adorable. It is really adorable. It is really, really cute. So I'm excited to get to that one and stitch it up. Vanessa, hello. I just got my sewing machine back from the repair shop today, so I'm excited to sew with you all. Yay! That's a happy day. Getting your sewing machine back. That's a happy, happy day. Donna, hello, Angela. How are you doing? I'm, or Rana, sorry. I am good. I'm good. I uh, quickly got, for anybody who's in the Stitching with Lori Club, I quickly got the, not quickly, there's nothing quick about sending invoices. So I sat down and got those invoices sent for the mystery box. So those should be in your inbox if you haven't already seen it. So I got that done. Um, my eldest is at her first high school soccer practice. She has been like, she loves soccer. Soccer is outside of band. Soccer is probably her favorite activity. So she's at her first high school practice and um, was super kind of excited to go. 
So I'm anxious to see how that went for her and what she thought about it and if it was good. And uh, other than that, I'm good. I just have so many things that I want to accomplish. So I'm trying to prioritize and get stuff done that needs to be done and then move on to the next thing that needs to be done and try not to have things be too delayed. But knowing that I am one person and so I can only do as much as I can do. So, but that's always on my mind, but I'm good. Overall, the short answer to your question, Rana, is I'm good. Things are good. How are you? Vicky, hello, Vicky. Deanna, are you going to get it too? I would like to know. I should have kept it in here. I put it back out in its spot. And the funny thing is, is my sister stopped in over the weekend and she was getting ready to put candy in it. She thought it was a candy dish. I was like, what are you doing? Don't put candy in there. <laughs> She's like, oh, I thought it was a candy dish. And I was like, no, it's not a candy dish. Don't put candy in my yarn bowl. So I'm curious if other people are going to get it too. I want to see if you end up getting that cute little sheep yarn bowl. Um, please post a picture and share. We can see how many happy little stitchers get that bowl. It's so cute. I was very surprised to see that other people had it. Brandy says, I will have to knock out Edna sometime this week. She looks pretty manageable. So hopefully that will happen for you. She's so cute. She's such a cutie patootie. Debbie says, working on my remix mini blocks number two. This one, the one without the stars, this one. Oh, you guys, I already have got stuff on order for Remix 3 and 4. I'm really anxious for it to get here so that I can make those two and I can get kits cut up and sent out to everybody. I am really loving that series. Debbie, are you loving it? I'm really enjoying that series. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, you're using Cozy Christmas for these? Am I understanding you? Yes. You just said yes. <laughs> you're using Cozy Christmas for that? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see it. You're going to make like a Christmas quilt out of it? That's a really good idea. Or are you just doing that block in Christmas? It's a really cute idea if you make all of them out of Christmas fabric. Angela, I told my husband, says Patty, what you said about his board he made me in the email last night. He said to tell you thank you. It's so cute. And I'm going to find, I'm going to, I have some ideas. So I'm going to get back to you about that, Patty. I have some ideas. That board is so cute. My gosh. It's really, really nice. My dad does woodworking stuff like that too, although he doesn't as often anymore, but oh, I love, I love woodworking things like that. It's so, so cute, Patty. I can't wait to, for you to find something that you like that'll work perfectly on there and see it all done and finished. So tell your husband, he's welcome. I love, I love the board. It's very, very cool. Yes, what a cute bowl. I couldn't believe it. Yes, very happy day, says Vanessa. I haven't known what to do with myself without my machine. I don't blame you. I would feel the same way. I'd be like, what? Something is missing in my life. Susan, I want that yarn bowl too. I have it in my cart. You do. It's so cute. Where do you get the bowl? So did you see it today, Marsha? I don't think you were on today. Do you know what we're talking about? I should just grab it. Hold on. Hold, please. It's just right out here. I'll be right back.
dropped it running back in here. So this, this is the yarn bowl. It's just a little sheep. And I got it on Amazon for our granny square long. And I thought these yarn bowls are so darn cute. And so I thought, I'm going to see if I can find one. And I found this one on Amazon. I thought it was darling. So I got it and I shared it today during our floss tube in Huckleberry. It was like, I think you actually mentioned it first. I think Huckleberry actually mentioned it first. So I was like, you have the sheep yarn bowl? I have it too. And then she posted it on Happy Little Stitchers Facebook group today to say, yes, look, I have the same one. And then Brandy chimed in and she said, I have that bowl too. So it's super cute and very functional. Like, I love it. The yarn unwinds in there so smoothly. I love it. It's so, so good. So it's on Amazon. If you search for yarn bowl on Amazon or sheep yarn bowl even, uh, it'll pop up on there for you. Hello, Tammy S. And it looks like the boss. She is the head chicken with that powerhouse pose. She sure is. She's got her wings on her hips and she's like, little chick, don't mess with me. Or somebody's trying to bother her little chick and she's she's got the mama bear pose happening. Were you able to find out if the fabric for Be Happy is enough to starch? I have not been able to find that out, Audrey. Um, I don't know. And I don't even know if Lori would know that. Uh because she doesn't starch. And so I don't know if she would even know that, number one. And uh, um, number two, I think I've heard her say in the past that for applique, she doesn't recommend starching. So I don't know the answer to that question yet. Yes, yeah, so it will be Christmas cake using, oh, cozy Christmas, such a good idea. I can't wait to see it. He just started not so long ago and he's doing, he's doing really well, Patty. My dad's been doing it for years and he makes beautiful stuff. I've got so many, I mean, he made this yarn, this quilt ladder for me, but he's, he's made a bunch of other stuff for me over the years. So I love it when he creates woodworking items for me. Um, but that board, it looked great. And the way that he painted it and then, or maybe you did, I don't know which of you painted it and then roughed it up a little bit. It looked very, very nice. A perfect finishing board. Perfect. I think he did very well. Oh, good, Debbie, yes. Her method is the best for sure. So darn cute, Marcia. That's exactly what I thought. And apparently a number of other people as well. I looked on Amazon. I saw it and put it in my cart. Also, it's so cute. It's darling. The bowl Lori has. I saw it at Hobby Lobby over the weekend. Oh, you did? Oh, I could totally see me collecting yarn bowls. I could see that becoming a thing. Holt said her tin cups. Yes. Yes, Carrie, she did. We just talked about that today. Lori was on our floss tube today. And... Yes, when you're on the go and you can't take maybe your ceramic yarn bowl with you, she has used this. Your little thing of yarn just fits right in there and it comes out nicely. So she uses her tin cups for yarn bowls as well. So she shared that through her Instagram, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, maybe. It's so darn cute. Patty says, I got Pearl almost done over the weekend, got busy making bags, got the four little ones done. Oh, so good. I starch even Lori Holt projects. It's fine. Oh, good. Uh, Audrey, thanks. Only want to know for the piece parts. So I'll have to find out. The good thing is if, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who I can ask about that. I don't know if anybody would know. He painted it and distressed it. He made me a big ladder and a small one and a lot of other things. It's perfect. He's off to such a good start. And does he enjoy it, Patty? Marcia, you just got it. I love it. 
You'll have it this week. Hello, Kim. Oh, Kim's working on the club recipe book. Yes. So I shared during our club meeting on Friday that our recipe swap is still going on. It's going to continue until the end of chicken salad because we're going to include all of Lori's recipes in our uh, club recipe book. It only seems right to do that. And um, Lori was hoping that we would do that. And I was like, yes, of course we would do that. So uh, we're going to wait to release or send out the cookbook until the chicken salad uh, so long is done so that all of her recipes can be in there. So that gives everybody more time to send Kim recipes for our club recipe book. And I'm sending a copy to Lori too. So she's going to get your recipes too. So I'm super excited about that. That'll be a fun recipe book. And we'll have all of those great recipes that Lori is sharing through her um, blog, through her chicken salad so long. We'll have them all in one place. Part of our recipe book. It'll be lots of fun. So Kim is working on that. So be sure to send her recipes if you're in the club. Oh, good, Patty. See, he's found a new, a new hobby too. And he's good at it. Or he's picking it up very quickly from the looks of it, from what I can tell. I mean, I'm no professional woodworker, but it looks really good to me. Patty, I can't wait to join the club. I can't wait to have more people join too. Now that more people are finding out about it and everybody keeps asking. I am anxious to have it open up again so that those who want to join can join in. The more, the merrier. And we already have some fun ideas brewing for the new year. So I'm excited about that. And some people stepping forward to say, I would like to volunteer to do this. And so it's going to be fun. I'm excited. And it's such a great community. Um, we do lots of community activities through it. So that's also fun to be involved in those. When can you join? So it opens up, Sandra. Uh, the club will open up again on June 1st. And it will be open the whole month of June for people to join for year two, which starts July 1st. So the club will be open June 1st through June 30th for people to join. That's going to be the like the open enrollment period where people can join in at that time. And then it'll close again. July 1st. So it's not too far away. It's just, just around the corner. So if you're not sewing chicken salad tonight, what are you working on? Remix, I heard remix. Christmas remix, which I'm excited to see. But what is everybody else working on? And I am now sewing with a very small, shorter stitch length. So I'm having better luck with shaping my shapes. My gosh, these chickens are so cute. When my mother-in-law was just here, she was like, oh, those chickens are so cute. 
Is there a waiting list for the Lori Holt Club or is there no limit on membership? So far, there's no limit on membership, Debbie, but you know, it, it could get to the point that we would have to put a limit on it. But right now we're not at that point. I don't feel like we're at that point. So right now, no limit um, and no waiting list. It'll just open up and people will sign up and then we'll have to see, you know, how it goes. If it gets to the point where it's like, okay, there are quite a few people, then we might have to put a limit on it. But I'm hoping that we can just, I would just like to allow everybody to be a part of it who wants to be a part of it. I don't like to leave people out. I don't like to exclude people. So I would like for it to be open to everybody. Marsha, thank you so much. You guys are so helping get, get us closer and closer to that um, overhead camera fund. Thank you so, so much, Marsha. That's really nice of you. Okay, I lost track here. So Susan, you're welcome. Sandra, Susan is working on her borders for her chickens. Tammy is hand binding a spring spring table runner. Kathy's working on my Christmas list. How far are you? What section are you on for that, Kathy? I'm still on the sweater section. Finishing up stitch cards B. I loved those. Kim says, this going to well, my cat Lily is chasing the mouse on the computer screen <laughs> as you're trying to format your recipes. Oh my goodness. I'm making some Cory Yoder barns, but instead of using her panels, I'm piecing my own barn quilts for the sides of the barns. Oh, I would love to see that. Share it to our group. I'm working on Winter Rose Manor. Oh cross stitch by with thy needle and thread. So that is on the list for a stitch long for November. If I can gather enough charts by then, that's my goal. As soon as I have a good chunk of charts gathered, then, um, I will put it on the website, but I love, I love that cross stitch. Deanna, it's beautiful. I'm working on making an embroidered fabric egg. Ooh, Lori. Hello. You're not late. You're just on time. Are you all still making chickens? I am. Got all my pieces turned. I gotta go iron them quick. We were talking about the yarn bowl. We got off on a tangent. I'm finishing up my flea market. Cross stitch. Oh, you are. Oh, that's so pretty. I just have a few flowers left. I just need to finish them. I just need to do it. Just finished the cookies. Oh, the cookies, Kathy, on my Christmas list. I was like, what are you baking cookies on my Christmas list? Okay, so you're farther than me. Just discovered, which is not, that's not unbelievable. <coughs> Just discovered I left off the beak on one of my chicks. Oh, you did, Marsha? <clears throat> that would be an easy thing to do. I need to start getting my chick's legs embroidered, put on there. Patty, the tractor is my favorite. Reminds me the one my dad had when I was a kid, grew up on a small farm. The track, oh, where is it? Did I do it? Yes. It reminds me of my dad's tractors too, Patty, because he had international tractors, the red ones, not the green ones. He had red international tractors and we had a farm all something, some number went with it. It was a farm all something. And it looked just like this. No cab, no nothing. It was just an open. And we used that tractor for everything. So this has big nostalgia factor for me as well. It reminds me of the farm being out there working when I was growing up. Yeah, our farm was small too. Amy says, stitching on a small spring piece by modern folk embroidery. It's not that Irish sampler, is it? My gosh, I looked that up last week. I couldn't remember the name of it. Then thankfully, Lori helped me out. And uh, I looked it up. That Irish sampler is so pretty. I'm just ironing 
Except my iron got cold, so I need to wait for it to warm up. So cross stitching is happening. Some chickens are happening. Some other projects are happening. There's lots of creating happening right now. Patty, are you loving these little stitch cards that you're stitching up? I think they're so cute. Brandy, we had a big Alice Chalmers tractor that we used to bail with. Alice Chalmers. Bale hay. Oh my gosh. There's so many funny farm stories. Okay, I got all my pieces ironed. I learned to drive on our farm all. You had a farm all too? And that's why I designed the block to look like one. That's why it's so nostalgic for me. Oh my gosh, my sister got this tractor stuck in the mud once. Oh my gosh, she thought she was gonna get in so much trouble from my dad. So she got off the tractor and she just walked home with <laughs> the tractor there. Oh my gosh. We have so many funny farm stories. What is your funniest farm story? That's what I would like to know. Not a sampler. It's called Five Flowering Lilies. I do a set each month. I love those too. Those stitch card sets, they're so fun. Cute, quick, satisfying, adorable. I love it. Only the boys were, oh yes, dad made up for it later on when he would let me drive our boat when we would go camping. It's all John Deere at the farm now. Yeah, we didn't ever have John Deere. We had all international. My younger daughter and I just spent spring break visiting my college daughter at her campus in Idaho. We all learned to make granny squares. Yay, Jill. And we all put our own spin on colors and sizes. I love it. Your dad still has that tractor. It was a sad, sad day when my dad had to let that tractor go. Like legit. It was a very sad day. Working on Granny Square, says Marsha. I have never crocheted before, but gave it a try after watching Larry's video. 20 done? Marsha Miles. Are you serious? Okay, so this is just proof. Proof is in the pudding. Whatever that means. I'm not really quite sure what that means, but this is proof. It was the same thing for me. Like I have five done, but I have never, I have done cr chain crocheting, but it's been like 35 years ago. So consider me like a no, I have never done it before. Just consider me a beginner. And now I've made five and I'm like comfortable doing it. I'm not super speedy, but I'm comfortable doing it. And here's Marsha, who has never crocheted before, decided to jump in and give it a try. And she's made 20 granny squares. So there have been a ton of people who've reached out and asked me, can beginners do this? Like, I don't know. I've never done it before. This is proof. You can do it. I have done it. And Marsha has done it. And she's on a roll. She's like hot. Her hook is burning hot. That's so exciting, Marcia. And so is the tractor. Not sure what happened to it. Miss it. I learned to drive a 70 John Deere with a hand clutch. We still have it, Janine. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Yes. 
It's one of the things he hides Easter eggs in and around for the grandkids and great grandkids every year on my parents' annual egg hunt. I love that. You can do it, Patty. You can do it. You go, Marsha. I'm so excited. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't get to drive the tractors either, Patty. My uh, older siblings did, my older sisters. I'm one of seven sisters. And uh, my older sisters drove, but I never was able to do that. When it was hang season and so hot, Alice had a cab on it, but no AC in those days. I would make milkshakes for my dad and uncle for all that hard work. Oh my gosh. I believe it. But we would always go out and we would do, <clears throat> um, you know, we would always be out there working on the farm. I need Lori's pictures. I need Lori's pictures on my phone for placement. Um, we would always go out and do work on the farm. And uh, one of the things we always had to do my, so there were kind of four older sisters. So there, I have seven sisters. I'm the youngest of seven. There are six of us still living. And uh, so we had three older sisters and then there were us three younger sisters. There was just a slight age gap between the older three and the younger three, not much, four years, I think, between the two sets. And so the younger three, we had this job every year where we would um, have to go out in an old beat up pickup truck. And we didn't have our license or anything, we, but we were, we had to drive around the cornfield and try to find any ears of corn that the combine missed. So my dad was like trying to get every kernel of corn that he could possibly get. So we <laughs> drove around in the pickup truck. And I think maybe my oldest of the three had her license maybe, but my other, me and my other sister, who's closest to me, she's five years older than me. She didn't, we didn't have our license. And so my oldest sister was driving. <laughs> it was like, you know, she had the radio on, she had her sunglasses on in the front seat and she's driving in the cornfield. Like she's cruising on the main street strip, you know, so she's driving through the cornfield, like all cool with her stuff on. And my sister and I are in the back of the pickup. And every time we would see some corn, we would um, holler for her to stop. We'd jump out of the back of the pickup truck, run and get the corn, throw it in the back of the pickup truck, and then hop on and bang the side of the pickup truck for her to go again. So we were doing this one year. And both of us saw corn. And so we hollered for her to stop. My one sister went one way. I went another way. She got back to the pickup before me. She tossed her corn, corn in. She jumped up onto the pickup truck and she banged the side. Well, as she was banging the side, I was in the process of grabbing the tailgate and stepping up onto the bumper to get into the back of the pickup again. And as I'm stepping up to get in, she bangs the side and my sister hits the gas and takes off. So I'm like holding on to the back of the pickup tailgate with my legs dangling like I'm trying to run in the corn, trying to get on. And my sister, who's in the pickup back of the pickup with me in the pickup bed, she's laughing so hard that she can't say anything to my other sister. My other sister's got her sunglasses on and the music blared and she doesn't know what's going on behind her. So my sister is laughing so hard she can't tell my other sister to stop. And so I'm like, my feet are running, trying to catch up and I'm trying to get up into the pickup bed again. And um, eventually my sister who was in the back with me said, just let go, <laughs> just let go. So I ended up letting go and like rolling through the cornfield. And then eventually they figured out what happened and they stopped, came back and got me. <sighs> all of us kids would always fight over who got to ride on the tractor with dad. That was a big thing for us too. I cannot tell you how many times I rode in the combine with my dad and there was no room in that cab because sometimes my mom would come ride too. So she'd sit, there was like a little bench next to the driver's seat. So she'd sit on that seat and I would sit by dad's feet and I, I'd be, because the whole front is a window, Right. So I'd be right down, like right where all of the corn is coming into the combine. And so I'd be right down by his feet. 
And watching all of that corn come through would just mesmerize me. So I cannot tell you how many times I fell asleep at my dad's feet in that combine. Marsha, I just finished my last cancer treatment and I'm using my resting time to make them. Marsha, congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. And how are you doing? How are you feeling? That's a lot, Marsha. That is a lot. And I'm glad that you have found this to um, use for your resting time and your recuperation. Be sure that you take that. Take as much of it as you can to get back on your feet. Dad used the tractor to cut wood and haul too. I too am one of se seven, second to the last. I rode on the tractor a lot with dad, miss those days. Marsha, good for you. You are amazing. It is kind of amazing we survived childhood. But Marsha, tell, I mean, if you feel comfortable sharing, I would love to know how you are doing. And I hope that you are recuperating and doing well. That's, that's a lot. That is a lot, a lot. I'm placing my stuff down. That's what I'm doing. I took some of the best naps of my life riding in the tractor with my dad. I too love riding the combine. It was mesmerizing. It would like hypnotize you. I swear. My gosh, Edna is so cute. I wish I had that overhead camera now so that you guys could see how cute she is. Except I think I might have to move her over. Congrats. I know that's a joyous day. Oh, my goodness. Marsh says, I'm doing very well. Thank you. And feeling very grateful. Oh, my gosh. I am so, so glad that you, can't, you are through that. Good for you. That's a long road. Yes, let us be part of your support group for sure. I would love that. And I would love to hear that you're just continually improving. Hello, Cindy. Loving the chicken salad making process. Me too. Yes, congratulations on your last treatment. To completing Edna, the name of my favorite aunt. Marsh is so proud of you. I went through cancer treatment 11 years ago. That, that's a lot. Oh, she's in a pretty good spot. Baby chick is pretty close. Sticking pretty close to mama. This is pretty close, actually, for my first layout. I remember having to buck hay bales before I could go out on my date that night. Oh my goodness. That is funny. Yes, we have lots of funny, funny stories from those farm days. That is for sure. Oops, I forgot to measure from the top down. Yup, I got a scooter up. Just a tish. I wonder how, how, sounds like there are lots of farm, farm people out here. Ah. <sighs> 
I wish I had my daughter here to read. Yeah, I keep looking at um, Lori's picture. It's pretty good. Marcia, we are here for you. What a bump in the road of your life you have had to deal with. I do hope you get a clean bill for sure. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. How far is everybody else on Edna? Are people um, just laying her out or are you done? I saw Huckleberry's chicken that she posted to our Facebook group. It's her chicken quilt that's finished. It's so, so cute. Or she has all the chickens done, I guess. Is what she said. I want to finish pinning this and then I want to show you to see what you guys think. Those wings, I'm trying to decide if those wings are in the right spot. Maybe I need more of the tail out. I don't know. What do we think? Is that too much tail? Is that the right amount of tail? And do the wings, do the wings look right? Or does she look like she's wearing shoulder pads? My six-year-old grandson was over Friday night while I was working on Pearl and asked me, Mama, you making me more chickens? Oh, I love it. I was super excited about Prairie Life <laughs> Stitch Along in September. I was surprised to have found that one. I am surprised that you found it too. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, Lori. <laughs> you don't say. You're done with Edna? Did you finish it recently? <laughs> um, Brandy, I am so glad you found it too. And I'm glad that you sent it to me. Um, uh, because I swear, I... I need somebody to find me a Sabbath stitch for next year. I swear I just don't see, I just don't see all of the cute stuff that's out there. And so I really appreciate it when people send me stuff. Just finished Edna says Tina. I'm super excited about Prairie Life Stitch Along too. And I really, I'm really excited about it. And I'm so excited that Lori's stitching with us, that she's going to do another sampler with us. So I'm pumped about that. I'm happy about that too. 
I don't know, Elizabeth. Cornelius was a huge pain in the tail feathers. Okay, Cornelius was, let's see, Percy. This is Cornelius. Cornel this one? Cornelius was a pain? Why was he a pain for you? I've had some chickens that I've not gotten along with, but we've worked it out in the end. Have you and Cornelius become friends again? Marcia is done with Edna. And the next one, Beatrice also going to start on Penny next. <sighs> Tell me, how do we how do we feel about this? Do you think that Edna is ready to be glued? Or do you feel I, this wing needs to move over maybe a little bit? How do we feel about Edna? Looks like tail goes over closer to her head compared to the one behind you. Wings look good, says Debbie. Closer to her head. Oh, it is closer to her head on there. I always look at Lori's. And you know what I do? I use that fabric in the background as a grid. I'm just going to be honest with you. I use it as a grid and I count the rows, columns, whatever I need to count to figure out spacing. So for me, this background fabric was perfect because it's almost laid out like a grid. So for placement, um, I think that that really helps. But yes, it is closer. It's a little bit more straight up and down in that one. and a little more off to the side. So I guess it's just what I prefer. I don't know. Let's put it more straight, straighter. I'm gonna show you the straighter option. Tell me what you think. Do you like it straighter or do you like it more off to the side? Brandy says, I have seen a few Sabbath ones that I have liked, but I was bad and didn't write them down. If I find any, I'll send your way. Maybe you can find one. I hope so. Savior's Praise was just perfect. Like, you know, when you see some things, you're just like, yep, that is for me. Like, I need to do that. And then other things just don't connect or speak to you as much. And so um, I haven't. Oh. I haven't uh, found another one that I have felt as connected to and excited about like I did a Savior's Praise. And there's time. Like, I'm not worried about it. I've got plenty of time. But... Mm -hmm. I did need to move that chick over just a tish. But now I think I haven't put the other little beak thing in, but I think there'll be room now for it. See, look how lucky we are to just um, have Lori here hanging out with us. Elizabeth, I mixed Hank and Cornelius's bodies. And when I tried fixing Cornelius's body, I sewed it wrong twice. <laughs> Decided to use iron on interfacing and ironed on the wrong. Oh, that's why I do not like iron on interfacing. I have done that too. I got it straightened out on the fourth try. Oh, Elizabeth. I'm sending you a big stitchy hug. I would be very frustrated too. But you've got it figured out. And now you're on to bigger and better things. Hello, Tracy. Just getting started on mine for tonight. Both are great. It just depends on what mood Edna is in and if her tail feathers are ruffled. <sighs> I need to decide. It can be, for me, it can be both multiple times a day. 
So I think I like it down a little bit more is what I'm thinking. I think so. She's so cute. Oh my gosh. When my mother-in-law was here, she was like, she thought she was just adorable. She said, oh my gosh, that one is so cute. She, here's what happened. So she didn't notice like all of this other beauty that's happening back here. Like I've got chickens here, here, and back here. What did she notice? This one. She's like, oh my gosh, that chicken is so adorable. I was like, oh, which one? And she's like, this one right here. The paper one on the calendar, not the one that I put time and effort into making. She, I was just giving her a hard time. She started laughing. Um, so she really liked Edna. I said, well, that's the one that I'm making tonight. I like it better how you have it now. Either way is fine though. Oh, oh. Hola, Maria. Patty, funny Lori. I probably do Edna. Tomorrow night, my next step is to start the applique. Just a bit nervous on that next step. Have fun. Have fun, have fun, have fun. It'll be fun. If you can do the sewing on the line for the interfacing, you can do the applique. It'll be fun. And it'll feel so good once you realize how it's really not that big of a deal. My oldest saw the flea market quilt box and said, I claim that. I haven't even started it. I love that they love the quilts. Me too. They're, it's a good thing. For this set of the cards, going to have Hubby make a frame for them and thinking of distressing them. Oh, for the farm ones, that would be really cute. You can hang them as a set in your house, especially since they have so much meaning and nostalgia for you. I would do that too. I could definitely see myself making some of these again and hanging them. Like as soon as I saw this, I thought, oh, some really fun, cute, colorful frames and hang them as a set in your kitchen. How cute would that be? So cute. So, so cute. Okay, so we have about five minutes left. I'm going to start... I think that Edna is ready to be glued. So I'm going to start gluing her and adding my beaks and stuff like that. I'm gonna start ironing my, my beak pieces in half. Okay, what did I miss? I don't know quite how to ask this question. Oh boy, Tracy. But with Henrietta, when there are several layers between the eggs and the basket she sits on, do you cut some of that down, like cut the top of the basket off? I did not. I did not. And for this, it was okay. For me, like I didn't have a problem with the layers for down here. That wasn't too bad. But up here, you know, for the beaks, it does sometimes get a tish bulky, but it's it's manageable. You know, like I was still able to do it and it wasn't a problem. I did not either.
you could, but I didn't. I actually love the layers and dimensions that it adds. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. Tracy. He wants to make me stuff, so keeping him busy. I think that that's awesome. Um, Patty, I think that that's really, really cool. And then he can be a part of it. You know, like it's something that you're doing together, which is cool. Which is very, very neat, I think. I don't want my handiwork to look like it's printed on something. I want it to look like handwork. Yes, true. Which is kind of my point with my mother-in-law. Like, look, but these are the real thing. It's not printed on paper like that. Yes, and it is cool to have that dimension, like Lori's saying. I wasn't going to, but I wasn't sure if that was correct. Yes, you are correct. You are correct, um, Tracy. Although I, I, I mean, that's a good question because I think there have been times, Lori, correct me if I'm wrong, but there have been times where you have cut some things differently. Um, if you feel like there's going to be too much bulk, but I think that that's a rare, uh, occurrence that usually she just does the layers from what I but I mean, I'm not Lori, so I don't know. Gluing my beaks together. Marsha, I have been hand appliquing my chickens. Not sure what I will do with the remix series yet. Oh. Have you machine appliqued before? Thank you for doing this, says Nancy. Even though we're doing different things, it's so fun to stitch with stitchy friends. Do you like it, Nancy? I hope so. Sometimes when there's a lull, I'm like, hmm. oh boy, this is enjoyable for people. I don't know. So I'm glad that you like it and that you're enjoying it. I hope. <laughs> My chick has the biggest beak ever. I mean, obviously I like printed things, but when I take the time to make something, I want to look like I made it. Yes. You haven't done machine applique yet. Yes, Lori likes her paper crafts too. Um, so are you excited to try it, Marsha, or are you nervous? After the day I had at work, I need this. Oh, good. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay. This chick is kind of cheaping up at the mom. So I want the beak to go. Maybe not that high. Oh, for the love of Peter. Yeah, that's cute. Let me show you guys. See what you think of the beak. That's pretty cute, right? A little baby chick's beak. Now, oh. Well, I will save those for next time. I forgot this is one of the beaks that you do both, right? both ends under. Yeah, like we did for Henrietta. I am hand applicating the remix, but with the prepared pieces, it is going quickly. Marsha's nervous. I was nervous too. I was nervous too. And then once I started to do it, I was like, this is fun. This is fun. I really like it. And it finishes it so nicely. Um, for me, I am not doing a zigzag stitch. 
I am doing a straight stitch. And I think Lori said for this one, she's going to do a straight stitch too. I don't even know if you can see it, but I just do a straight stitch along the edge, like a really, like really close to the edge, maybe an eighth of an inch less than in some places. Some places is pretty good and other places I think, whoops, whoops, a daisy, what happened there? But overall, I really like it. I like, um, I like the straight stitch. I think that'll probably be my go-to applique stitch. Uh, I think the zigzag is really cute sometimes, but I I like how the straight stitch really blends in and doesn't really detract from the picture that Lori is creating for us. So I'm doing a straight stitch on mine. Kathy says, I went to, to a quilt sewing group recently. I took a tin bread box to carry my work in. Everyone said, what's in there? I replied, chickens. <laughs> Step back. Kathy, that's so funny. Just do a little test piece on a few scraps of fabric to give you confidence. Yeah, you really can't see it, especially if you have the matching thread. Um, every time I applique, part of the excitement is opening up that thread box of Lori's. Uh, but there's always a thread that's really close in color. So it usually blends right in. And I'm new, I'm new to machine applique, so I'm not experienced at all. Um and I think you'll you'll find it, you'll be pleasantly surprised that it's very doable, Marsha. I think you'll enjoy it once you, you know, get a few under your belt. Trace said, nervous is what happens right before you get addicted to appliques. So you're right on track. Yes, Tracy, it's so true. That's funny. That seems funny, but it could be so true. It is so true. I, I think you're going to love it once you, once you give it a go. Okay, I need to cut Edna's beaks because I'll save these other two that I've already glued and ironed in half for a future side view chicken. Are you straight stitching the remix blocks too? I am. I am. Yes. I can show you that too. I'm like looking. How bad is it? Okay. That's not, that's not terrible. I don't even know if you can see it, but it's just right along the edge. This one has a little bit of white popping through, which I'm not happy about, but it's just right on the edge. Maybe you can see on the yellow, zig up, zig, 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 around those petals. So very close to the edge. Like I said, not perfect in some places, but I'm okay with that. You know, it's a process and I'm, I'm improving as I go. And I think that's, that's the goal, right? Like that's the goal is to just jump in and give it a try. And hopefully by the time you get to block 20, you'll notice a difference from block one and that you've come a long way. This is my first time to applique two, says Janine. Janine, I'm using zigzag stitch. It's not as terrifying as I thought it would be. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait for the next Lori Holt stitch along. So Janine, are you gonna jo um, join in Prairie? Are you doing Prairie Meadow? It definitely looks good, Angela. Oh, thank you, Marcia. Michelle, what stitch length do you use? Okay, so when I am doing the interfacing, like sewing around before I turn and flip, so when I have the, I've drawn the shape on the interfacing 
and I'm stitching the two pieces together before I cut the X in the back. I use like a 0.2 stitch line. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not 0.2. But do you guys remember on, was it Hattie? I feel like it was Hattie. Was it Percy? It could have been Percy. It was on one of them that I kept poking holes in everything. I was so frustrated by the end of that night. And Lori was on here and she was like, Angela, so a shorter stitch length, so a shorter stitch length, which I had not been doing because I kept forgetting to do it. I knew that she recommended to do that and I just kept forgetting. Well, now lesson learned after a night like that. So now I always remember and I do, it's like just a little above one for the stitch length when I stitch around the shape on the interfacing. When I do my appliqueing, I'm at about a two. So I do a two when I do the appliqueing. Yes, you are, Janine, I love it. And then here's the big question. Okay, so the, app, the applique, there will be Farmhouse Star for the B plaids, Prairie Meadow for Prairie. And then the big question is, are you gonna do Calico? Tell me, Janine, if you're doing Calico. Calico Garden, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. I'm working on your club recipe book and your recipe today says two. Oh, <laughs> Kim. Yes, two cans. I'll go fix that typer right now. Thank you. You are welcome, Michelle. Yeah, so two. Yes, so oh, Prairie Meadows and Calico Gardens. They're so pretty. And in the past, so I debated and I was so drawn to doing flea market flowers and I debated and debated and ended up not doing it. And then, of course, after the fact, I really regretted it. I was like, why didn't I do flea market flowers? It's so, um, so pretty. And now, just based solely on time, I'm debating about prairie meadows and calico gardens. And I feel like I'm going to regret it if I don't, if I don't do them. If I don't do them all, I feel like I'm going to regret it. <gasps> Patty says calico. Patty, are you doing calico? I don't remember if you uh, reserved that or not. I do not remember. Calico Gardens is so pretty. Calico Garden. It's not gardens. Garden. I feel like I need a vintage iron in my life. Tell you what happened with this iron and a, a Lori ironing board. Patty says, I want to, got to wait, wait to see on payday. Oh, yes. Um, so the other day I was in here over the weekend and uh, I was ironing something that I was sewing and um, this brown stuff got all over what I was working on. And I purposely don't ever put water in my iron like I don't do any of that stuff and I have my iron it sits on a wool ironing mat and uh you know what happened it sits it's the aliso aliso 
I don't know how you say it, but it's the one that raises up. You've probably heard it as I've been doing it tonight. Um, you probably heard it raise up and down, but that heat from the iron, it kind of burns the wool a little bit. And then the weirdest thing, it like the wool, the burnt wool somehow got in the crevice between the ironing plate and the white and yellow iron. So it got in the crevice all around the outside. And when I ironed, some of it fell off and then got ironed. And now it came right off. So it wasn't, you know, a huge disaster. But um, I blew, you know, in that crevice and all of this wool, this burnt wool came flying out of that crevice. And I was like, this does not happen to Lori Holt because she has vintage irons. They don't have these crevices. Um, Calico Garden is so intimidating because it's so big and there are a gazillion pieces. Tina, I think, I mean, first of all, Lori's going to make it manageable for people. I wish I had that here. It's out in the other room. Oh my gosh. It's so gorgeous. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. And I love that it's big. When Lori had said the other day, she made it bigger because she's had a lot of requests from people to make design quilts that fit on beds. And I thought, yes, a person can only have so many throw quilts, which I love because our family needs a lot of them. But yes, quilts for beds, which you can always, you know, add stuff and make it fit, fit a bed. But to have a, a quilt that's truly designed to be on a bed, it's just, it's gorgeous. And the detail in that quilt, it's so, so pretty. It's so, so pretty. Okay, I'm just going to put this beak here and then I'm going to catch up with what is being said. Look, I think that's pretty good. She's ready, I think. I think she's ready for some applique. I think those beaks are okay. What do you think? There's Edna. She's so cute. I love these chickens. Let me tell you guys a story on Thursday about my little one. Okay, let me see. <clears throat> Angela, I'll be doing both Prairie Meadow and Calico. I know, and I so badly want to do them with you. I do. Like, I have really enjoyed chicken salad. And it's got me into a rhythm of getting sewing into my life every week, which prior to this, to starting chicken salad, was not happening. It was constantly being shoved off of the plate because of other business stuff that needed to be done. And I love having this time. I love applique. And it really, you know, fills me up. And so to have this kind of becoming a regular part of my week has been really, really nice. It's been really, really nice. I got two of those irons trying to find someone place close by to fix them. Oh no, do they not work for you? I've not had any problems with it working. It's worked good. So Tina, Lori says, we just do one applique piece at a time and one block at a time. It's not harder. It's just more of the same thing. Yeah. Yes, quilts for beds, please, says Chris. Looks great, says Marsh. Thank you. The requests I get are always for larger quilts and never smaller. They are saying they want to make the applique quilts for their bedspread. I love it. I love those requests. I'm in agreement with whoever is requesting such things. Still hoping for a calico cross stitch. <laughs> I've had so many requests for that. So many requests for calico cross stitch, calico gardens, and also calico quilt seeds. We've had requests for that as well. Hello, Barbara. Sherry, Angela, you were amazing the night you were making Percy. You kept your calm, your grace, and your sense of humor. That's why we love you. Thank you, Sherry. Well, I mean, what are you going to do, right? It happens to everybody. Everybody. And my, and my daughter was here, and she <laughs> was 
was, she was like, what is going on, mom? Like, what is happening? I was like, I don't know. What is happening? Oh, that's funny. Believe it's the cords. Oh, well, I've wanted a vintage iron for a long time. I've just never kind of done it. And I've been, it's been on my list for a long time to make a, an ironing board like Lori's because I don't have a huge ironing space here and um, would love to just find the time. My dad was going to cut me a piece of, he was going to help me do it. And we just haven't, we haven't found the time to do it. So that's still on my list. We all love you, Angela. Aw, I love you guys too. You're sweet. Lori, sewing now, but not on my chicken salad quilt. Sewing your project bag and flannel floss, friend. Nice. Hello, Ren. Are you all moved in? Are you safely moved? I'm so happy that you're hopefully getting settled. My package arrived safely today. Oh, good. I'm glad it got there safely without any problems. You and me both, Tina. You and me both. Calico is just so pretty. It's so pretty. Don't you think it's gorgeous, Lori? I mean, in you know, you've designed a lot of stuff. Does it rank up there for you for how pretty it is? Janine would love to make one of Lori's ironing boards too. So I know she has a tutorial out there somewhere. Um and it's on my list because I think I will like it so much better. Do you guys want to know what I have for my ironing space right now? My dad made it for me. He actually made it for my mom. And then my mom passed it on to me. Um, I'm in, not unpacked. Wow, that'll take some time. Uh, I love my boards of worries. I have got one at work too. So what I have right now is a TV tray that my dad put like an ironing top on a TV tray and it can fold up and be put away when not in use. So it was perfect for my mom because they would go to Texas for the winter. And when she's down in Texas, that's when she does most of her crafting. So she didn't have a large space and she could pull it out, you know, and unfold it. It's just a TV tray with an ironing top that my dad put on it. And uh, then she could fold it up and put it away when she wasn't using it. It was perfect. And she could also set it right next to her when she was sewing. So she would be sewing and she'd just set up her TV tray right next to her and she'd have her ironing space as she's sitting at her machine. So it's brilliant. Like it's a fabulous idea. It's just very small. I feel like I want a bigger ironing space. I love my boards of boys that I have. Got card C done. You did! My gosh, you're flying, Patty. Aren't they so fun? Oh, good. Oh, I kind of love that, Lori. So Lori's saying it will be a longer so long because I want everyone to enjoy the process, including me. I kind of love that. Like we've gotten into, so the a draw for me would be, number one, I don't want to miss out on it because I feel like both of them, first of all, I love the meaning behind it, behind both of them. Secondly, so I'm I'm a sucker for, for meaning behind stuff like that. It's a real draw for me. And then secondly, the other big draw is um, we've really gotten into some fun evenings of doing these chickens together. And it's been great motivation for me. And I know I've heard from some of you who have said it's been great motivation for you too to kind of stay on track. Like, okay, I'm going to get together. We're going to do happy little sewing hour. Um, and so I'm going to get all my stuff together so that it's ready to go for Monday night or for whenever the sewing time is. And then we work on it together. And, and that's been really helpful for me this time because it kind of forces me to stop and to prepare and to be ready to go when we have our sewing time. And then while I'm in it, I usually just finish it up once we get off of here. So then I usually just work into the evening and do all the applique and everything and have this done. Or sometimes it goes over into the next day and I finish it the next evening. But usually within 
24 hours of this live, I have the chicken done. So that's a big draw too, because, you know, we can just keep motivating each other to, to do it. Tina says, that's comforting, Lori, like big quilts, but feel just a bit overwhelmed when I counted the pieces. Oh, don't be overwhelmed. Hello, Sharon. I agree, Angela. It, it was, is so much fun to make this chicken quilt together. So then that helps a little bit to um, do all of the sections together that we're doing each week. Love this sewing time. Oh, good. Okay, so I need to wrap it up because... <laughs> I said we were going to have like five minutes, like 20 minutes ago. Oh, Lori says, Tina, I totally get it. Most people who see my applique quilts think they look overwhelming and not something they can do until they do one and realize it's so much easier than they thought. Now that's true. She speaks the truth because this chicken salad is proof. Tracy says, agreed, this is one of the first quilts that I'm actually getting done on time. Isn't it nice? Because we have set aside time, we're stitching with friends, so it's enjoyable. We can chat and kind of keep each other company. I mean, I know that it's weird because it's through YouTube, so it's a little weird, but it's still fun and it's helping me at least. And I've heard from a bunch of you that have said the same thing. It's helping to stay on track. And it feels good to stay on track. So there's that. That is a draw for me to, to do both of those. Uh, Prairie Meadows and Calico Garden. Yes, I do love sewing together, says Susan. That's comforting to know, Lori. So I feel good about starting it with you when it's time. Yay! Oh, Calico Gardens is so, so pretty. Okay. So I need to let you guys go so that you can get on with your evenings and I'm going to try to finish Edna up unless I run out of steam, which is possible. Um, I love it too, says Audrey. Thank you so much for joining me tonight and putting Edna together with me. I hope you guys will share pictures of Edna when you get her done. <laughs> Debbie, keep talking, Angela. I almost have this block. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't stop. I'm almost done. Oh my gosh, I do that all the time. I'm almost done. I'll be there in a second. Let me just finish what I'm doing. One more stitch, one more piece to applique. This time together makes it feel as if we are all in the same room. Oh, does it? That's good. That's good to hear. It was nice visiting with you all and heckling Angela. <laughs> I can take it. I can take it. It's it's welcomed heckling for sure. Okay, so I will let you guys go. I will see you though on Thursday um, for our quilting live stream at 1.30 p.m. Uh, cent Central Time. So please join me for that. Lori, thank you so much for popping in and joining us. Big hugs to you, my friend. And for everybody else, big hugs to you guys as well. And have fun finishing up Edna. And please be sure you post pictures and share all those cute little chickens that you're making. Have a fabulous, fabulous night, you guys. I'll see you in a few days on Thursday. Take care, everybody. Happy stitching.